So in this video on Machine, I'm gonna show you how we can get that nice cut up, old school kind of approach where you've got a beat and you take a tune, cut it up into little chunks and then trigger it on the pads. Obviously, if you had a, another sample, you could use a keyboard as well, but this is focused on Machine. Gonna go through a workflow that I've been enjoying recently. And so I've got here a little beat on the first group, just a real basic nine and nine backing. And what I'm gonna do is do something with that Don Blackman tune since you've been away so long, a real classic. And uh, I'm just gonna chop it up and uh, we're gonna trigger it on top. So the second group here, group B, and uh, I found it here in the browser, so it's ready to go. So here's a pre here. So that's just auditioning from the browser. And what I'm gonna do is load it up. So it's gonna be loaded onto this pad. The thing is, is it's playing the whole thing because it's one shot. So what we wanna do, take it out of browse, take the envelope over here away and put it onto ADSR. So it's only gonna play for as long as I'm holding the actual pad there. Let's see how it fits. So that's nice. So what I don't wanna do literally is to get it exactly the same as the original. I really wanna mess around with it. And uh, you know, one of the ways you could do it is to actually slice it up using the, the automatic beat detection. But that's not the approach I wanna demonstrate here. I wanna show you this one where you're really experimenting, adjusting the sample start point until you find something you like. So um, that's that down there, okay? So that's the first one. I'm happy with how that is. That sounds fine to me. So I'm gonna move it onto another pad. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to duplicate and you can see up here, we've got this toggle switch to keep that in that mode and that's what I wanna use. So what I wanna do is I wanna make a copy of that. So we've got the first one, just click on the second pad and that's ready to go. So let's take it out of this duplicate mode. So these are two separate instances of the sound and I'm gonna set the start point of the second one differently. So we're gonna come up to edit and um, let's get this onto the edit mode over here. So basically we can see, I'm gonna come over here to the screen, I'm gonna zoom in a bit. And we wanna get the sample start point so we can see this. Zoom out a bit more. So we got a chance to really get in there and have a play around. So this is what I'm talking about, this ability. You know, I'm doing this with hardware. This is what I was doing um, on that 90s underground video on Ableton. I was doing it, you know, using the mouse. This is much more fun. So that's actually a good one here. And you know, if you're concerned with uh, the amount of memory these things are taking up, you might wanna truncate as well. And so you can see over here, there's a truncate button and that would actually trim everything between the start and the end. But just for speed, I'm not gonna worry about that. I've got plenty of RAM on my machine. It's not gonna be a performance issue for me. So we're gonna move on to the next one. So that's like a nice starting point. What I'm gonna do is go back to the duplicate mode and this one here is gonna go onto there. So we're keeping that same starting point. This is a beauty of it. So if we take that out and uh, we're going to take a look now at this one. So you can see over here on this window, the start point's the same, which is great. And uh, let's get in and let's adjust that later. And of course we could try it on top of the beat. It's a really nice way to get exploring the possibilities of these sounds that they're offering you. So I'm gonna go back to duplicate so you can see here, selecting this pad, next one, this is over there now. Take it off of the duplicate and uh, let's zoom in again, change the starting point. Zoom out a bit, I've come a little bit too far out. Quite a nice one there. Not bad, but I'm gonna go forward. Let me just move this so we can zoom in a bit further. So starting. Alright, let's 
try. It's not quite right that, but we can just try in real time. I might as well get that down, you know. It's such an instant thing. So, just a little nutshell uh, kind of short video there. I wanted to show you the possibilities. It's literally a very simple process and it's all based on this whole thing. You load your sample in, and of course, the terminology on the machine is a sound. Then we go to duplicate, just literally click the pad that has that one loaded click the next free one, go to edit, change the start point, do it all in real time. It's a lot of fun, really, really cool. Just one more thing that I'll show you actually whilst we're here, because um, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I might want to sort of kind of flip it up a little bit, is if we take it off of the sampling, and um, what I want to do is at the literal, at the whole group level, let's come up here and uh, go to take it off the modules. Let's take the pitch overall down. Also your polyphony, to one so only one of those can play at once which is great it gives it a nice real kind of chopped up stuttered vibe and so the, here we go so we're twisting it up remember we don't want to get in trouble over the whole copyright thing with sampling we want to try to do something different and uh, remember if you are doing sampling really you should be clearing this stuff because um, you know there are legal issues there's rights in sampling so basically rights of the people that write the song rights in the actual copyright on the recording so look up that stuff very important okay but this is a real concept a real old school concept that works very very nicely particularly on machine